Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging hour discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kuchera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kuchera. Welcome in. Good afternoon. Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Just a few reminders before we get started on our topics. And that is there's a number of different ways you could listen to the show, track the show, follow the show. And we want to make sure we provide you that information. One is on the good old fashioned radio, KDOW 1220 AM. Tune in uh, Monday through Friday. From 3 to 4 Pacific Daylight Time, again, KDOW 1220 AM. If you're out of the listening area and you're anywhere online, you could access the website, kdow.biz. On that website, you could just click on the button that says Listen Live, and you can listen to the show um, anywhere in the world, as long as it's this time of the day, during while we're, our show is running Live. Also, we're feeding, uh, we're streaming live on Facebook. So, thank you for those that continue to follow, grow, uh, give us feedback. Uh, it's been a really great, um, it's been a great addition to the show over the last several months. Uh, streaming live on Facebook for a number of different reasons. One, we could reach out and touch more people and give more people information. More people uh, are going online to really. Watch, um, watch these shows, interact with the shows. We're getting a lot of interaction as well, questions and feedback. So we'd love that. Thank you so much for those that are continuing to follow and watch us on Facebook. Appreciate that very much. Lastly, be sure to download the podcast. That is extremely important. The reason why is because not everyone has the luxury of listening and watching this time of the day. So if you download the podcast, you don't have to worry about that. You could Listen to the show anytime you want at your convenience. You can go to iTunes, Stitcher, um, Real Estate Radio Live. You can go all these places and just type in, if you're at iTunes, just type in Real Estate Radio Live, and you could download the podcast. You go to our website, reradiolive.com, and download the podcast there. We have a lot of exciting things coming in in 2018, even though we're not even two weeks into 2018, stay tuned. We have a lot of exciting announcements to make. One, just as a, to remind you, we have Investors Monday, which means we have a partner now with Real Estate Radio Live, and that is Charlie Castro with Buy Right Properties. He'll be with you every single Monday on Real Estate Radio Live, talking about the excitement of investing in real estate outside of California. A lot of great information there. And then later on in January or February, we're going to have Legal Fridays. We'll have an attorney that will be on on Fridays uh, talking about all kinds of legal aspects of a number of different things uh, involving the Silicon Valley. Very excited about the, that development. And then in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be making big announcements about the program you've been hearing about, some details, information on and off. And that is real estate, uh, a new way to buy, sell real estate transactions. And uh, excited to make that announcement. We'll be doing that in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned. And uh, a lot of stuff coming your way with Real Estate Radio Live in 2018. The focus, the reason why I want to do this is because we want to be on the cutting edge. We want to be the value to you, the consumer, moving forward, the place that you're going to check in and get the most value. That's plain and simple. That's why I started this radio show. That's why I developed this communication channel is that we as a group, um, as a network, all the people that come together for the Real Estate Radio Live, we want to help you, the consumer, with your real estate needs in general, all your real estate needs, whether you're buying, selling, commercial, 1031 exchange, doesn't matter. We're going to continue to add partnerships, programs, people organizations, whatever we can to help do that. And we're excited about what's coming here in 2018. All right, for the live show, if you have any questions for me, 1-800-516-1220. That's 1-800-516-1220. If you have any questions for me during the live show, 
I have three topics today I'm going to address. One is I'm going to cover the, um, the banks that held the most complaints with the CFPB in uh, 2017. CFPB, for those that aren't familiar, is the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau. And they have the ratings for the banks, the top 10 banks that you don't want to be in this top 10 category. This is the banks with the most complaints. And um, year over year, unfortunately, banks are still rated some of the highest in the amount of complaints. Isn't that ironic or amazing to me? It still, it still boggles the mind for me. Banking institutions with, which handles money, which in most cases you submit your money. Now, granted, a lot of these aren't investment. Some of them are investment banks. We're talking about banking institutions. You have your checking, your savings, your credit cards, your car loans, maybe things like that. And still, year over year, most of the big banks have the worst ratings ever with customer satisfaction. They're terrible. And, and they're worse than many industries. When did you think that the institution that's handling the money that flows through your household and your business during the course of the year might do a better job at customer service? I mean, I'm in this industry in the mortgage side of it, and it's embarrassing many of the times. It is. And if you've been following this show long enough, you know I'm honest about this. It doesn't matter. I mean, we have to be transparent in the way we deliver this information, regardless of what industry you're in. It's okay to be honest about your industry if it's a mess or you have some backlog or you have some improvements. I mean, it's reality. You're not hiding anything from the consumer. But what some people still don't realize in our business, in our industry, 94 to 95% of people start any kind of their real estate-related searches online. Do you hear that? 94 to 95% of people start any type of the real estate related services online. So if you're looking to buy a house, sell a house, get a loan, anything rated real estate, nine, almost 100% of people start that online. The reason I'm stressing that, I'm, I'm repeating it over and over, we have a more educated, informed consumer base today, ladies and gentlemen. And as an industry, in the real estate industry, the lending industry, title and escrow, all the things related to what we do, we need to wake up and do a better job at providing better services, products, technology to these people that are wiser and smarter and more educated. That's our job. Because consumers will go somewhere else. Consumers will make the decisions. They will eventually... Someone, companies, will come along and give consumers what they want. Sometimes it takes a long time. Sometimes it takes longer than we all like. But eventually, <clears throat> if we or anyone else is part of an industry or, an, or a business or a product or a service offering that is not delivering on what we should, eventually someone is going to come in and make the changes and eventually consumers are going to have more and more decisions and that's what we need to understand about all of our businesses i'm specifically talking about the real estate and lending business so let me jump in uh first segment i'm going to talk a little bit about these banks with the most complaints in 2017 and then um i'm going to share some more information in, in segments two and three are going to be one we're going to talk a little bit about tax law and specifically how it affected home equity lines. Now, if most of you don't understand how it affected home equity lines, you're going to stay tuned and listen to this because uh, it's going to be, it might be some eye-opening information for those that are super busy and don't really understand how it's going to affect your taxes with home equity lines, whether you have them or not, or if you're going to get them, keep them, consolidate them. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that in segments two and three. And then I'm going to finish up the show and talk about what to do with all that equity in your house, in your home. And I'm not suggesting go out and do something with it, but what I'm going to do is give you some suggestions, some ideas, just like when you invest in a stock or a mutual fund or investment or something, and you have a big run-up, I'm going to suggest there's ways to take some money off the table, so to speak, and do some other things with it. 
All right, so let me get let me jump into these top ten banks with the most complaints in 2017, and I'm probably going to roll into segment two with this. So we're going to go ten and work our way to number one, the worst. Uh, the highest number of complaints, number ten on the list was B of A, and they had uh, 6.28 complaints um, per billion deposits. It doesn't sound like you know. It sounds like not that much. It doesn't sound like that much, but it is. The bank improved. Five spots, actually. Uh, it was even worse in 2016. It doesn't seem like a lot for the amount of transactions, but still, it's it's a high rate. So B of A, again, Bank America ranked to number 10 in uh, the banks with the most complaints in 2017. Number nine is Key Corp. We don't hear too much about Key Corp. They were at 6.8%, and um, they were number nine. On the list, and as I go down, you don't want to be uh, you don't want to be on this list. Believe me. And number eight, our friends at Wells Fargo. Yes, our friends at Wells Fargo. Um, they've had a rough couple of years, and they continue to have some rough spells and rough waters. Uh, Wells Fargo does, and they were number eight, so they're still in the top ten in the most complaints. And I think most of us know why. They've been in the news a lot the last several years with a lot of problems over there at Wells Fargo. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to come back. Segment two, we're going to wrap up the top 10 banks with the most complaints in 2017. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about home equity lines, the new tax law, and how it's going to affect you. Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live. If you have any questions, 1-800-516-1220. I'll be back with you in just a couple minutes to continue the show. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. The world is changing and so is real estate. It's changing in ways that give consumers more control with more affordable options. So what are your options? Hi, this is Joe Cachera with Real Estate Radio Live. I've been on the air educating and informing consumers for over seven years now. I'm excited to announce that there is now a more efficient and cost-effective way to buy and sell real estate. Our team at Real Estate Radio Live is launching a new program designed to help buyers or sellers like you in real estate, lending and title. That's right. We'll coordinate the entire transaction for you. So you benefit by working with the same team, saving time and saving money. We'll guarantee you'll not only be working with the most qualified, hand-picked experts in real estate, lending and title, but you will also save a significant amount of money in all three services as well. Act now and benefit from changing the world of real estate. Call 408-838-9060. Go to reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live, streaming live on iHeart, TuneIn, and KDOW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for Real Estate Radio Live, Joe Cuchera. Welcome back in. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Joe Cuchera with Real Estate Radio Live, uh, streaming live on Facebook. Thank you for those following, uh, communicating uh, with us during the show. Thank you for those tuning in at KDOW 1220. AM, you could check in on your radio, those for uh, following us live online. And lastly, if you're listening to this via podcast, thank you. Thank you all for continuing to support the show. Um, we continue to grow leaps and bounds. We're getting thousands and thousands of more downloads each month. And um, that's good to see because we hope that we continue to add value and information to you, to consumer, and a place you could check in and uh, hopefully help you make wise decisions and educate you in around real estate in the world of real estate. So let me jump back in. Uh, top 10 I'm going through quickly of the banks with the most complaints in uh, 2017. Real quickly, for those that may not have listened uh, or heard, I should say, in the first segment, I'll go through that quickly. Uh, number 10, we're going to um, go the opposite direction here, one being the worst. So number 10 was B of A, Bank of America. Number 9, Key Corp. Number 8, Wells Fargo. Number seven, Co-America, Co-America, I'm sorry, Co-America is number seven on the list. Number six is U.S. Bank Corp. Most of you are familiar with U.S. Bank. Uh, that's a familiar name out there. Matter of fact, U.S. Bank just pulled their wholesale division. Now they're just a retail 
Uh, number five is Citigroup, so Citibank. Most of you know about Citibank. Number four is Fifth Third Bank Corp. You don't hear a lot about them. I mean, I do, and if we're in this business, you probably hear about some of these, but Fifth Third Bank Corp. Um, that's a tough one to say, especially if you had a couple of glasses of wine. Um, the, but that's number four, and um, number three is Citizens Financial Group. Again, some of these are less familiar for most people than others, unless you're in this industry. Number two is SunTrust. Uh, that's been around for years. We're very familiar with that bank, SunTrust. And number one, this is interesting. So this is the bank with the absolute worst, most complaints for 2017. And it's TCF Financial Corporation. I could be wrong about this, but I think this is the lender. I'm almost sure. I'll have to double check on this. So this is the lender that does um, primarily second loans. We use them on a fairly regular basis, full disclosure here. When we're doing a first and second combination, that's not good to hear. Um, if it's the same bank, TCF Financial Group. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's the same one that does those equity line seconds, but that's interesting. So that's the top 10. You don't want to be on that top 10 because that's top 10 of the most, most complaints. The reason I share this, just like I share positive news, just like I share objective news, is that you know, you have a choice. You always hear me say this. If you if you follow my show now for almost eight years, hopefully those, if you're just tuning in or just checking in, stick with us. I always remind consumers that you have a choice, specifically in anything, of course, but I'm talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, real estate and lending services. You have a choice. And that's the way it should be. And, and you, we as consumers, we're all consumers. We have to put ourselves in our in our customers and our clients' shoes every once in a while. I don't think enough of us do that. For instance, I'm in the mortgage, I'm in the lending, residential lending business, right? Well, from time to time, I get for myself. I just refinanced my properties um, earlier, uh, about a year ago. It was it was early 2017, and <laughs> I, I'll tell you, it was interesting. And I know this business, and it was still a bit of a, a strain and a struggle at times. And I thought, gee, I have a pretty good profile, and you know everything's good. And I mean, I, I thought it would have been pretty easy, but there was there were some challenges that that were kind of interesting. And so the reason I bring that up is that we we should understand what our cl- customers and our clients go through. And even if you think your customers and your clients always have a wonderful experience with you. You should ask them, and you should have a survey in place. I'm not sure our industry, I mean, one of the great things our company does is when the loan closes automatically, they automatically get emailed what's called a social survey, and they're asked to rate us. They're asked to rate us. And I think it's a great thing. Some people don't like it because they're afraid of what they might hear, but if you're working hard to do a good job, you want to hear what people have to say. And you know that... The other thing that we should hear, we would, I'm telling you, good, pe- good business people, I don't care if you're an individual business owner or you're a, or, or a major corporation, you know what we all should want to hear? We want to hear where we go wrong. We want to hear the mistakes we make. It's easy to hear when someone rates you five and you're incredible, your team was great, I love you guys, that's great. And we love those, we really do. But you know the ones that you get a little bit of a, you know, your stomach quenches a little bit and you just get a little bit nervous when you get the ones that aren't so good. But you learn from those. You learn from those. And so it's just important for people to express what they didn't like about the service or the product or whatever you offered. It's important. You have to do that. And, and you know, we have to rate that and figure out how we get better all the time. So that's the top 10. If anybody's uh, interested, you can always go to the website and check those out. So what I'm going to dive into next here is uh, equity line, equity line to credit. So a lot of people, I want to get this out as quickly as possible. I'll continue talking about it. The new tax law, most of you, if you may not know, there's zero, absolute zero, no more interest deductibility. You can't deduct any kind of interest, any benefits. There's zero, no more tax benefits for equity lines. There used to be tax benefits for equity lines up to 100000 Now, some people would argue and say, 
<laughs> they get more tax benefits on equity lines over 100000 That's great. I'm, you know, if that worked for you, that's great. But there used to be some tax benefits for home equity lines. Now there's zero, none. The reason this is important, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to change the way people, a lot of the way people finance their construction, their remodeling, their add-ons. So in the past, a lot of people would just say, I'll just throw an equity line on for a year or so, 100 grand, 200 grand. I still get some tax benefits, not a big deal. It's easy to do. Here's two reasons, two big reasons why I want you to really stop and think before you add a home equity line onto your property. One, rates are going to start going up. Prime, the prime, the Fed is probably going to raise that prime at least three times this year, maybe four. Okay, that's one reason to, to, to have second thoughts about it because home equity lines are tied to the prime lending rate. And the minute the, the, the Fed raises that prime, it's going to affect your home equity line immediately. Second, <clears throat> the new tax law. The new tax law doesn't allow any tax benefits, zero, no tax benefits for the uh, home equity lines of credit. They're done. So those are two big reasons why I really think you should stop and think about it. Now, <coughs> excuse me, if you still need that money, what I'm advocating and what I'm t- uh, suggesting that clients do Roll that roll that money together in one loan and combine it, especially if you're seven hundred and fifty thousand or less, because then you can get hundred percent tax benefits. So even if you have a three hundred thousand dollar first, and let's say you need a two hundred thousand dollar equity line, you want to do two hundred thousand dollar remodel or add on in your property. Don't do the equity line. I shouldn't say that. Do do the equity line if you plan to pay it down or off in the next year or so. If you don't, what I'm going to suggest to you to clients is Roll that into your first loan. You don't want to be stuck with that liability on the second. You just don't. No tax advantages. And with the rates going up, you could be caught and there could be some issues there. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take another break. When I come back, I'm going to finish up talking about home equity lines, what to know about them, uh, whether you should take them out or not, how to use them in uh, 2018 and going forward. And then uh, later in the show, I'm going to talk a little bit about all the equity in your home. With the run-up in appreciation in the properties here in the last couple of years, what do you do with some of that equity to plan for the future? This is Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live. Stick with us on Facebook. We're streaming live. We'll be back with you on the live portion of the show in just a couple minutes. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Hi, this is Joe Kuchera of Real Estate Radio Live. Thanks for tuning into our podcast. We are your go-to resource for all aspects of real estate, including buying, selling, refinancing, building, and legal and tax advice, and much more. You can subscribe to Real Estate Radio Live podcast on iTunes and Stitcher to listen to an engaging discussion about anything and everything real estate. So make sure you get our app, RE Radio Live, in the iTunes store to follow the show. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live, streaming live on iHeart, TuneIn, and KDOW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for Real Estate Radio Live, Joe Kuchera. Welcome back in. Thank you for following us this afternoon. Checking in with us, Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thank you for sticking with us on Facebook. And thank you, as always, those tuning in on the radio at KDOW 1220 AM, those that are online. And lastly, uh, those that download the podcast, listen to the show anytime at your convenience. Appreciate the support, as always. Today, we're talking a little bit about home equity lines and what to be aware of. Two things, again, before I, you know, kind of quickly summarize this again before I roll into the next topic. On There's absolutely no more tax benefits for home equity lines, zero. So that's something everybody needs to know. It doesn't mean, you know, the world's caving in and you can't use them and they're not, you know, worthy anymore, any of that kind of stuff. But just you just need to understand your options and maybe what you should do instead of go open in a home equity line right away. My suggestion is this. 
If you're going to do a remodel, an add-on, if you need some major money that you're going to reinvest back into your home, my suggestion would be just do a cash-out refinance and leave that on one loan. And again, this is the one I always get. And before you automatically say, Joe, I don't want to do that because I have such a great rate on my first. I understand everybody's got a great rate on their first. <laughs> but it's not so great when you do a, what's called a blended rate. So even if you have this three and three quarters or something less than four, which is a really good rate, I understand that. But ladies and gentlemen, you may not understand this, but even it's kind of funny, even jumbo. So jumbo financing now is cheaper than conforming financing. Isn't that crazy? This business is nuts. It makes no sense at all sometimes. That's right. You, you could get a better rate on a million dollar loan than you can on a loan for three or four hundred thousand. Isn't that crazy? Absolutely nuts. Makes no sense at all. A couple of years ago, you couldn't even get close to a decent rate on a jumbo financing. The whole thing is flipped. So one of the things I want people to understand, and if if you don't if you're not working with someone in the mortgage business that understands the different loan levels and the things you could do within the loan limits, some people believe or not have been in this business a long time, and they don't realize that you don't need to have a loan amount under jumbo guidelines to get jumbo financing. I want to make sure I'm clear about this. Jumbo in the Bay Area now is six hundred seventy nine thousand. So anything over 679000 is considered jumbo, right? Okay. A lot of people don't know. You don't need to have a loan amount at six seventy nine or more to get jumbo pricing. And the reason I say that is jumbo pricing right now, in many cases, is better in conforming. So when you're talking to someone in this business that doesn't know what they're doing, and you have a $500,000 loan, and they're saying, oh, it's 4.5% for a 30-year fix, or what? 4.5%? Really? Yeah, that's what a conforming loan. Guess what? If you quote that same thing with Jumbo, you're going to get a lot better interest rate. Of course, depending on your credit, loan to value, you know, there's all those things that are involved, of course, but apples to apples, if you're matching them up, Jumbo financing is better. So if you're listening to this show and you have a loan amount of really any any loan amount over 450000 or so, really, seriously, you could get better interest rates with jumbo financing. So double check on that. Back to the equity lines. The reason I'm bringing this up is that even if you have a good loan rate on your first, and let's say you want to take a $200,000 equity line, that $200,000 equity line, ladies and gentlemen, right now with Prime Plus is going to be in the middle 5 to high 5% range. It's going to be it's going to be 5.5 plus percent. <clears throat> interest only. When you blend those rates, it's called blended rates, okay? If you have an interest rate of three and three quarters on your first and five and three quarters on your second, and you blend those two, I can't do that. I'm not going to do the math right in front of me real quickly, but what, what when I say blended rates is you take those two and you equally divide them up between. So now, when you're hung up on the interest rate on your first, keep in mind, if you're paying five and a half or higher, five and three quarters on your second, your combined mortgages, you don't have a great interest rate situation there. So my suggestion is be careful about automatically doing that. Let me suggest something would be better. Let's say you have a three and three quarters on your first, and then you have a $200,000 equity line that you're at five and three quarters right? You could combine those two depending on your credit scores, your loan to value, all those types of things. You could combine those two and still potentially be under 4% or even at 4%. You see what I'm getting at here? So now you have, let's say, $500,000 at 4% instead of $300,000 at three and three quarters and $200,000 at five and three quarters. Does that make sense? So don't automatically think that it doesn't make sense to refinance, cash out, and consolidate into one loan. In some cases, it may not, but go through that exercise and understand that it's not always the case to automatically hang on to that first loan. It really isn't. The seconds, 
could be very po- problematic, especially if you let them go. Most people don't realize this, but those seconds are amort- or amortized for 30 but fixed for 10. So if you have that equity line, at when it hits 10 years, what happens is it'll recast, okay? So what recast means, it resets <clears throat> for the new terms. So if you have a $200,000 home equity line and you've been paying this interest-only payment, it's been really low, and you've been, wow, this is cheap, no, nope, not a problem. If that recasts and your payment's at, I don't know, let's just say it's at 400 bucks a month or 500 bucks a month, <clears throat> that has a potential to triple. That's right, triple and maybe quadruple depending on your terms. Because what it does is when it recasts, Instead of being amortized for 30 because you've already ran it out 10 years, it's going to recast and re-amortize for a 20-year fixed, okay? And that's the first hit. The second hit that comes, and it's shocking, that takes people's breath away is it not only re-amortized for 20 years, but the interest only goes away. It goes to a principal and interest. So your payment could go up three or four times what you're paying now. And so these are things you have to be careful with on the home equity line in a second. So I would encourage you going forward, if you need a home equity line, you know, give me a call. I'm happy to walk you through it. We could run some scenarios. We could do the blended rates. We could do all this stuff. But I suggest that you really think hard about adding a home equity line unless you're going to do something with it in the next couple of years. And what I mean by that is either pay it off, pay it down, or consolidate into your first. So if you're out shopping right now, and as I summarize and kind of finish up this segment, if you're leaning in in the home equity line, no more tax benefits. And I would strongly consider that you do a cash out refinance and roll it all into one loan instead of do a home equity line of credit. That would be my recommendation for most people. I'm not saying it's for everyone, but for most people, you're going to be better off doing a cash out, refinance, taking that money in hand and locking that long-term rate in for the entire amount instead of exposing yourself on the second because that interest rate is going to continue going up as the as the prime lending rate gets raised as well. So something to think about, something to consider. If you have a home equity line already and you're kind of grandfathered in, you still get you know, some small benefits. So keep that in mind too. Uh, I believe it's still the $100 if you were grandfathered in, if you had that prior to. But remember, the second thing is, is when you're consolidating the first and seconds, keep in mind that um, the maximum tax interest, deductible interest on <clears throat> your primary residence now is 750000 instead of a million the way it was um, prior to. So keep those things in mind as well going forward. All right, what we're going to do is uh, take a break here, and uh, we're going to come back. I'm going to finish up and talk a little bit about all that equity that you've got in your home the last couple of years. What do you do with it? Do you sit on it? Are you excited about it? Do you have plans for it? And I'm not suggesting that you go out and do something with it, but you might be surprised at some of the things you might think you could leverage and plan with that equity in your home and help you plan for the future. One of the things that I'm going to advocate that I always talk to people about is think about where you want to be with your real estate and your mortgage three, five, seven, kind of 10 years down the road. Don't, I mean, it's nice to get, to be complacent. It's nice to be in a place where you tape it, take a deep breath, you feel pretty good, you have a lot of equity in your home. That's great. It is a good feeling. It's a really good feeling. It's a very secure feeling. It, it feels good. But analyze what you think you're going to do in the next three, five, seven, ten 10 years. The reason I say this is that if you're going to retire somewhere else or you want a second home somewhere else or you want an investment property or you have some investment properties, there might be some things strategically that you could do with the equity in your primary residence that would help leverage other properties and other mortgages 
within your portfolio that might make sense. And this is just a way to open your mind a little bit and look at different options. Now, it may not make sense to everybody, but you never know. All right, we're going to take the last break. We're going to come back, talk a little bit about what to do with that equity in your home, what kind of options you have. Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live, 1-800-516-1220. If you want to give me a call, I'll be back with you in just a couple minutes. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. The world is changing and so is real estate. It's changing in ways that give consumers more control with more affordable options. So what are your options? Hi, this is Joe Cachero with Real Estate Radio Live. I've been on the air educating and informing consumers for over seven years now. I'm excited to announce that there is now a more efficient and cost-effective way to buy and sell real estate. Our team at Real Estate Radio Live is launching a new program designed to help buyers or sellers like you in real estate, lending and title. That's right. We'll coordinate the entire transaction for you. So you benefit by working with the same team, saving time and saving money. We'll guarantee you'll not only be working with the most qualified, hand-picked experts in real estate, lending, and title, but you will also save a significant amount of money in all three services as well. Act now and benefit from changing the world of real estate. Call 408-838-9060. Go to reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live, streaming live on iHeart, TuneIn, and KDOW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for Real Estate Radio Live, Joe Kuchera. Welcome back in. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live with you five days a week. We are the only five-day-a-week live real estate radio show in the entire Bay Area. Proud to continue growing, <clears throat> almost um, going on eight years of providing you, the consumer, with education and information. We want to be your one-stop source for real estate. We'll continue to work hard to uh, bring that value to you every single day. The topic today I'm uh, going to finish up with is what to do or what could you do, or are there any possibilities to um, with the equity in your home? Most people that have owned real estate for a while in the Bay Area are realizing some incredible increases, um, appreciation, in the value. And that's wonderful. It's always a very secure feeling. I was having breakfast with a good friend of mine on Wednesday. We were talking about this. Uh, we were talking about some ideas of what he might be able to do. And, you know, it, it just it's prompted me also to continue to talk about all the different ideas and suggestions. A lot of people... Um, when it comes to real estate, they don't exercise some of the benefits that might be out there. They're unaware of what they could do. And let me give you some examples. So let's say your primary residence has <clears throat> a wonderful amount of equity and you're feeling good about that. And regardless of what age you are, in this case, we're talking about, you know, we're, we're in our mid fifties, right? So we're talking about five, 10, 15 years from now, what are you going to be doing? Where are you going to be living? So one of the things that came up is, you know, in this situation, let's say, for example, you have your primary residence, you have a million dollars for sake of this conversation, you have a million dollars of equity in your home. <clears throat> and maybe the home that you're in right now is too big. You don't want to retire in that home. It's way too big. But you like the area you're in. This is the example we were talking about. I thought it was a great example. Big home. You know, 10 years from now, I'm going to retire. The kids are going to be out of the house. There's really no need for me to be in this home that's, you know, 5,500 square feet. But I love the area. All right. So we talked about, why don't you look at leveraging some of your equity, maybe, from your house. <clears throat> buy a rental property in the area in which you think you're going to retire in the next 5 to 10 years. Buy it now. Don't worry so much about what the house looks like. Just pick a good area and a lot maybe in a neighborhood that you really like. And I'll give you an example. Let's say right now um, you could buy this home in an area for a million dollars. The home you're in now is worth you know well over $3 million. 
And you're thinking, you know what? I don't, again, I don't need a house like this. So 10 years from now, I will still want to be in this area or five years from now. Most people wouldn't think about this. Most people would wait until they're getting ready to retire or move or exchange, and then they do it. But think about this. What if you leverage the equity from your home and you bought this other home over here for a million dollars? Great neighborhood, a place you could see yourself five years from now, 10 years from now. It's a great lot, great neighborhood, but it's a 3-1 or it's a tiny place or a small place or it's not that great or it's not upgraded, but who cares? You're going to rent it for the next 5, 7, 10 years until you decide to retire there. And someone might say, well, Joe, what are, you, what are you doing that for? I'll tell you what you might do that for. Because if you're living in an area that's potentially going to continue to accelerate upward and north when it comes to equity, if you buy this home over here for a million dollars, knowing that you want to live in that scaled down version of a home five, seven, ten years from now, and you pay a million dollars for it now, even under conservative appreciation of three to four percent a year, that home could be worth 1.2, 1.3, even more five, seven, ten years from now. So you hedge that. Okay, follow me because this gets even more exciting and compelling. So now you buy this property for $1 million. You have another property. You're collecting rents on it. Now, depending on what loan on it, you're probably not going to have cash flow. I get that. I understand that. So you have to offset. You have to look at those numbers, and I'm not, I'm not avoiding or ignoring that. Believe me. But now if you buy this property, you have two appreciating assets. You continue to own your primary residence that is, that is appreciating. Now you have another appreciating asset over in this property you just purchased for a million dollars. That is appreciating, you know, that is an appreciating asset, right? So then when you go, let's just say five years from now, I'm good, I'm ready. I'm going to retire. I'm going to sell my home that's 5,500 square feet. Now it's worth four million. I'm going to go, go, I'm going to live in this place over here I bought five to seven years ago. It's now worth 1.3 million. Here's what's great. I could go remodel it, do what I want, and I'm in the home I want. And I hedged my bet on both sides. Now there's mortgage payments on the new home, and there's taxes, and there's cost, and <clears throat> you have to run those numbers. Believe me, it's part of the equation. But this is just one example. You could do that with a property near the beach or maybe somewhere you want to be, have a second home when you retire. Think about what you could do with the equity in your home now responsibly that could potentially pay off for you in the future in a second home, a rental property, or a retirement property. Open your mind, expand your thoughts about what you could do right now to better plan for the future, the head bets, hedge bets, especially in areas that are high cost and are going to get more expensive, or especially if you're talking about something near the water at a beach. Those places are always going to be up. There's only so much coastland. These are, these are some of the things that I want you to think about. If you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call. Don't hesitate. I'm always here. You can reach me, 408-838-9060. Always go to the website, reradiolive.com. This is Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thanks again for tuning in today. All those on Facebook on the radio and online. Have a great afternoon. I'll be back with you tomorrow. Take care. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Tune in, log in, download our podcast. Discover more at reradiolive.com. reradiolive.com.